All right. Now, Moses then proceeded to take over the government of Egypt. And he only used one instrument. What was it? His rod. That's right. Just that simple shepherd's staff. Nothing complicated, nothing sophisticated, something that the Egyptians despised because they despised shepherds. And yet Moses wrested the authority over Egypt out of the hand of Pharaoh and brought it to bear on behalf of God's people. And I'm personally convinced that Israel would never have been delivered out of Egypt if Moses hadn't won the spiritual battle with his rod. And I personally believe it's the same today. God's people will never come into the fullness of their inheritance. They'll never really be redeemed from the powers of Satan and this world until the intercessors learn to use the rod. That's the means by which we'll wrest authority from the God of this age and use it for the deliverance of God's people. And through that outstretched rod of God, we share the authority of Jesus on the throne right now. We enable him to rule in the midst of his enemies. Now we're just going to go on one more verse in Psalm 110, which beautifully ties this in not merely with the theme of kings and priests, but with the theme of apostolic outreach. And I, I just trust by the grace of God I'll be able to intertwine these two themes. Where in Psalm 110, verse 3, which is addressed to Christ on the throne, your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power, in the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. Now that's very condensed language in Hebrew and there's a number of different possible ways of translating it. I'm going to follow a different translation, most of which is taken from the, the margin of the New International Version. But we'll start with the first verse. Your people shall be volunteers. That's not a good translation. See, the problem with volunteers is when they cease to volunteer, they're no longer with you. <laughs> I am not interested in volunteers. What it says is, your people will be free will offerings. Those are the people that God is looking for. And then it says, in the day of your power. But the Hebrew says, in the day of your army. God is gathering his end time army and he's only looking for one kind of person. People who will be free will offerings. Not give free will offerings, but be free will offerings. I, I heard years ago the story about a gospel meeting in the state of Oklahoma in the United States. And this, I, I can't tell this in the accent of the place. And, but anyhow, according to this story, which is probably not altogether true, um, there was a, an Indian, an American Indian, in this gospel service. And as the preacher preached, he came under a sense of conviction. He felt he needed to do something to get right with God. So he thought, what will I give God? And he picked up his blanket, went up to the front of the church, laid it on the altar and said, Indian, bring blanket. But he still didn't have peace. So when he got back, he thought, I better give something more valuable than the blanket. So he took his rifle, which was a cherished possession, marched up the aisle with the rifle, laid it at the front of the church and said, Indian, bring rifle. But still no peace. But well, he had one more possession, which was still more precious, which was his horse. So he went out into the, the lot outside the church, untethered his horse, and led it up to the front of the church, and said, Indian, bring horse. But he still didn't have any peace. So he sat down, wondered what to do. The fourth time he walked up without anything, 
and said, Indian, bring Indian. And that's when he got peace, you see. Well, that's what God is saying to you and me. He doesn't want your gifts, he doesn't want your talents. All he wants is you. <laughs> and when he's got you, he's got your gifts, he's got your talents, he's got your money, he's got your time. <laughs> he's a very smart businessman, the Lord. So the army is going to be made up of people who say, Indian, bring Indian. Here I am, Lord, no strings attached, no reservations. I'm yours, do what you like with me. Then it says, and I'm going to now give you the, the uh, Prince adapted version from the NIV. In the beauty of holiness, from the womb of the morning, your youth will come to you like the dew. Now I believe that's the correct translation. It's a beautiful picture. First of all, it speaks about holiness in its beauty. And then it speaks about dawn and it speaks about a womb. So it suggests a period of night and darkness and then a dawn which is also a birth. Now I believe that's where we're at in God's timetable. There's been a night of darkness, we're coming to a new phase, a dawn is coming forth, it's going to come by a birth, it's going to bring the beauty of holiness. Have you ever seen the first rays of the morning sun strike upon the dew and the grass? There's nothing more beautiful. God says, that's how holiness is going to appear in my people. It's going to be the fresh morning dew illuminated by the rays of the rising sun. And then it says, your youth will come to you like the dew. Now I believe this is the apostolic call. See, we've dealt with the, the ruling and the reigning. We've dealt with the intercessors. The other part of the picture is the army. And I believe at this time, all over the world, God is assembling an army of young people, youth. Now, there is much for the older people to do. Uh, many, many different ministries. One of the great ministries is intercession, but I'm far from suggesting that's the only ministry, because if it were, what would I be doing here tonight? But I'm going to address my closing remarks to young people because I believe there's a special emphasis of the Holy Spirit and the Scripture on young people at this time. And the Lord is saying, I'm assembling my army. Are you willing to be a free will offering? Will you give me yourself without reservation? Go wherever I send you. Become whatever I make you. Now this has to be paired with the intercessory ministry, understand? One of the great problems in the church is that we've often had them separate. But the, the army of young people is not going to be effective without the ministry of the intercessor, stretching out the rod of divine authority over nation after nation and claiming them for God. 